Okay, problem set 22. This is a short one, um, but it's using a lot of properties of integrals that are probably pretty new to most of us. Um, so this first one tells us to use the rectangle property to evaluate uh, this integral here. What the rectangle property says is uh, just something like this. So if you've got the integral of a constant, um, that's just going to be that constant times uh, the difference of the uh, bounds. So in this case, that's going to be just negative 9 times our bounds, the difference of our bounds, so 3 minus negative 4, or just negative 9 times 7, which is going to be a negative 63. Next one asks us to use the addition property to fill in the blanks, and the addition property just means that um, you can have one integral from some bound to another bound, and you can split it up into two integrals, um, with the upper bound of one being the lower bound of the other. So in this case, I see that I've got uh, the integral of the same function. This one's from negative 7 to negative 2, and this one's from negative 2 to 14. So I know that if I add these integrals together, it's just going to be one big integral from negative 7 to 14. Okay, next up, they want us, they give us this function, f of x equals 2 cosine of x on uh, this interval here. So we first want to find our minimum and maximum. We, of course, we know we do that by first taking our derivative, which is going to be a negative 2 sine of x. Um, and I'm going to set that equal to 0. That's going to equal 0 when, let's see. It equals zero, sine of x equals zero at x equals zero and pi and two pi, but only zero is actually on our interval there. Um, so we're gonna look on this interval and see if it's increasing or decreasing. So something on this interval is maybe, let's try pi over four is a nice easy one. That's gonna be a positive square root of two over two, except, no it's not because it's a negative 2 in front of that, so it's negative 2 times square root of 2 over 2, which is just a negative square root of 2, which tells us that this is decreasing the whole way. So from x equals 0 to x equals pi over 2, it is decreasing, which means our maximum is just going to be this endpoint, and our minimum is just going to be this endpoint. If we had any other critical numbers inside of here, we would need to test those as well, but we don't. Um, so our maximum is at 0, comma, let's plug that in here, cosine of 0 is 1, 1 times 2 is 2, and our minimum is at pi over 2, cosine of pi over 2 is 0, so that's what that looks like. Now, knowing this, we want to use the comparison property to find the upper and lower bounds. The comparison property is a tricky one. So let me see if I can uh, kind of separate this here. Let's see. Let's see how well I remember it. Actually, let's see if I've got it written down. Because I don't think I do. Okay. So, comparison property says that, um, well, if we, it's probably easier to visualize it a little. So we know our cosine is going to look uh, something like this, right? Therefore, this maximum at uh, 0, 2 and this minimum here, I know that if I take uh, the integral of this, I know that the area within this curve is going to be uh, within these boxes, basically. So this is like a lower bound and an upper bound, essentially. Um, so I know that the integral of 2 cosine of x dx from 0 to pi over 2, I know that that's going to be greater than or equal to um, whatever this minimum here is, which just happens to be 0. Yep. And it's going to be less than or equal to this maximum, like this box here, this maximum times uh, this distance because of course we're forming that rectangle. So 2 times uh, pi over 2 minus 0 
which is just 2 times pi over 2, which is just pi. So I know my integral from 0 to pi over 2 of 2 cosine of x is greater than or less than 0 and less than or equal to, again, this is just pi there. So my upper bound is going to be pi and my lower bound is going to be 0. That's all they're looking for at the comparison property. It's a little bit tricky to wrap your head around at first, um, but kind of makes sense when you think about it in terms of these boxes here. Let's move on to number four. Sorry about my dog's barking. Okay. Next up, we've got number four here. It says f of x equals the absolute value of x minus two, and we want to know the mean value of this function. Uh, on the provided interval. Well, uh, let me just make sure. Okay, yeah, so we want to use that mean value theorem um, with our integrals, which it looks something like uh, this. Um, and we're looking for that, for that value C. So another way we could write this, you'll see it a lot, is um, that this, and we divide off that b minus a on both sides. Um, so this is how I learned it. It was 1 over b minus a times this integral here equals that f of c that we're looking for, right? So in this case, we've got 1 over, well, our b is 2, our a is negative 4, 2 minus negative 4 is 6 times... is going to equal, oh, sorry, my dog, hi, hi, Justice, um, is going to equal whatever that f of c is. Um, and we know that, of course, I can kind of plug that in my function. It's going to be this. Um, so using that, we can kind of solve for that c value. Of course, taking the integral of an absolute value function is a little tricky, but we can go ahead and use our uh, addition property, actually, to help us out here. Because if our, let's see, if our f of x equals the absolute value of x minus 2, then I could also kind of consider that a piecewise function. Um, where, let's see, da, 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 where if x is less than uh, 0, then it's going to equal negative x minus 2. Um, and if it's a positive x, it's just going to be this, so that. So now I can split up this integral. So it's going to be 1 sixth times, let's see, and so we're going to split it up with that middle uh, value there being a 0. So it's going to go negative 4 up to 0. It's going to be the integral of this plus this here, that's the integral of that. I hope that that, I hope that, that makes sense. And all of that is going to equal that uh, absolute value of c minus 2. Um, so now we just take this integral. I know undoing that uh, power rule there is going to be negative 1 half x squared minus 2x from that zero to, uh, from that negative 4 to 0. Plus, then this next integral is just going to be a positive 1 half x squared minus 2x from 0 to 2. Remember, this is all being multiplied by that 1 sixth. Okay, so now I just evaluate this integral because it's a definite integral. So if I plug in that 0 for this, it's all going to be 0 minus, and then I plug in negative 4, I'm going to get negative 1 half times 16 plus 8, and then plus this integral over here, I plug in that 2, and I'm going to get 1 half 4 minus 4 minus then plugging that 0, which is just 0. And I just keep going, and it's kind of a lot. Um, and so that's going to be, let's see, this would be a six, negative 16 over 2 or a negative 8. So that all actually evaluates to a 0 there. Plus, then this is 
So 2 minus 4, which is a negative 2. So we get negative 2 sixths, or negative 1 sixth equals this. And then I just add that to. So I'm going to get 1 and 5 sixths equals that C value, which is our mean value. Okay, that was a lot. Um, but I, I hope that those steps made sense, and I hope that that was uh, pretty clear. Because I know I don't, I don't always do the best job. Let's try number five now. So they're giving us a piecewise function, and we want to find that area under the curve, so an integral on this uh, bound here. So I know that that's going to be an integral from 0 to 2, because we're splitting it up there, of this first part. It's going to be this, plus from 2 to 4 of this bit here. And now I just need to evaluate that, right? So that's going to be, using my power rule, it's going to be 1 third x cubed plus x on here plus 1 half x squared minus 3x on here. And then evaluating that, that's going to be plug in my 2. That's going to be 8 thirds plus 2 minus 0. Plus now evaluating this, so I'm going to plug in that 4, that's going to be 16 times 1 half is 8, minus 12, minus now plugging in that 2, so 2 squared is 4, 4 times 1 half is 2, minus 6, okay, now we've got, let's see, 8 thirds plus 2, that's going to be, I think, 14 thirds, and then plus, this is a negative 4 minus another negative 4, which means that those cancel out. So our area just ends up being 14 thirds. Okay. And then finally, uh, we're given this function here, and this is similar to a question that we have on a problem set uh, 21, I think. Um, so we're given this function here on this interval with this partition, and we want to find any values of c inside that inter interval that makes our overestimate equal 18. So if I kind of sketch this function here, right, so I get f of x equals x minus 1, so it's going to look something like this, which means that, let's see, I've got negative 3 and maybe 2 here. Um, if I want my overestimate, that's going to look something like this. Let's see. Because remember, this is negative, so overestimate is going to be not quite crossing that. Um, it's going to be there, and then that zero part, and then my overestimate here is going to be there. All right. Now, I know that that's going to look something like, uh, or sorry, we're not going to use those boxes, of course, because our partition is not that. So we're going to say maybe C is somewhere in here, right? I know I'm going to use that uh, right sum over here for that overestimate. And over here, ooh, that gets tricky. I maybe chose a poor... Um, interval for this, actually. Let's, because I, I don't think the questions on the homework are actually that complicated. So I'm actually going to change this up a little bit. I'm going to change the interval. It's going to be 2 to 6, maybe. Okay, let's do that instead. Um, sorry about that. So now, again, sketching that out. We've got this, we've got maybe two, and six, and I know C is going to be somewhere in here. I'm just going to mark it there, but that's obviously, it's probably not going to be right in half. We're doing that overestimate, so it's going to be wherever C is there, and that there. So obviously this distance, uh, so this distance is going to be whatever C minus two is, and this distance is going to be whatever six minus C is. This height 
is going to be plugging in uh, an f of 6, and this height is going to be plugging in f of c. So this area here is going to be whatever f of c is times c minus 2. And then this area is going to be f of 6 times 6 minus c, right? Because we're just forming those rectangles. So then f of c, I'm just going to plug that in. I get c minus 1 times c minus 2 plus f of 6 is going to be 6 minus 1, which is 5 times 6 minus c. Let me distribute that, right? So FOIL here, I get c squared minus 3c plus 2 plus then distribute this, I get 30 minus 5c. And that's going to get me, combine like terms, I get c squared minus 8c plus 32. And I wonder if we can factor. It doesn't quite look factorable, but maybe. This is going to be negative 1, negative 32, 2, negative 16, negative 4, negative 8. Negative, yeah, that's kind of where that goes. Yeah, so not quite factorable, so I'll want to use the quadratic formula for this. Um, so set that equals. Oh, no, I'm wrong, I'm wrong, I'm wrong. I forgot a critical aspect of this, which is that we want this uh, upper estimate to equal 18. That's what value we're looking for. So I'm going to set the equal 18, and now I can set it equal to 0 and solve for the zeros there. So it's going to be c squared minus 8c plus 14, I think. I don't think that's factorable either. Hmm. Let me just check. I mean, I don't see how that would work. Yeah, so not factorable. We want to use that quadratic formula still, um, but with these values instead. So I know that... Uh, my c value is going to equal negative b, so it's going to be 8 plus or minus the square root of that, which is 16, or not square root, the square root of the square of that, um, minus 4 times a times c, uh-oh, that might be too big, 28, 56, oh, okay, 56 all over 2a, which is just 2. So that's 8 plus or minus the square root of 8 <laughs> over 2, um, which I can also rewrite that as 2 or just 8 plus or minus. Nope, no, 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 no. So that cancels and that turns into a 4 plus or minus square root of 2. So... I have two values of c here, so my lower value is going to be 4 minus square root of 2. My upper value is going to be 4 plus square root of 2. You can obviously type that into a calculator to figure out what it is, but I think this is fine as is. Um, the homework should probably accept that. Um, but yeah, this is all that this one is. I know it was pretty short. Um, uh, yeah, I hope that this all made sense, and I hope that this was helpful. Thank you for watching.